Hello everyone. So today in this video, we will learn to design the deep flip-flops using the behavioral modeling in Verilog HDL. These deep flip-flops can be of two types. They can be of asynchronous reset or with a synchronous reset. So we will learn how to design these different kinds of flip-flops using the behavioral modeling. So first of all, we are taking a case where the deep flip-flop is positive edge triggered and it is with a asynchronous reset. What is meant by a asynchronous reset? Asynchronous reset means that our flip-flop will be reset whenever the reset signal is active and it will be irrespective of the clock. So whatever may be the clock, if the reset signal becomes active, then the D flip-flop will be reset. So we have to design this kind of a D flip-flop using the behavioral modeling. So let us learn how to do that. This is the block diagram of the D flip-flop which has D, clock and reset as the inputs and Q as the output. Now this flip-flop can be either the positive edge triggered or the negative edge triggered. So we will now learn to design both kinds of triggering using the behavioral modeling. We all know that the truth table of the D flip-flop looks something like this if the D flip-flop is positive edge triggered. So during the positive edge transition only the output will be same as D whereas for other cases when the clock is other than the positive transition then the output will remain as the previous output it is not going to change. So we are learning to design the deep flip law which is positive edge triggered with a asynchronous reset. So say we have to design the deep flip law for this kind of a block diagram. Here we see that it has three inputs. D clock, clock is clear, it is a positive edge trigger D flip flop and reset signal is active low signal. So we just uh, start writing down the module for this. Over here the input uh, ports are D clock and reset, output port is Q and uh, as we all know that in the behavioral modeling the output variable has to be declared as a register type. Now over here in this always if you look at the list of these uh, sensitivity list over here we are passing two signal one is the clock signal and other is a reset signal so we will be passing clock and reset signal if we have to design for the asynchronous reset so since we are designing a positive edge trigger so before clock we will be writing down this keyword it implies that this always block will be executed only when the clock signal will be making the positive transition that means the clock will be changing from low to high or this always block will be executed whenever the reset signal changes and it changes from high to low because we are doing it for the asynchronous reset. Now look at the always block how it looks. So what we want we want that the when the reset signal becomes zero the output should be zero. So we have to write down this statement in this form. Else what we want we want that the output should be same as D because we are designing a D flip flop. So look at this always block over here. This block will be executed when? It will be executed only when the clock is making the positive transition or the reset is making the negative transition. And if the reset happens to be zero, then the output will be reset. Otherwise, the output will be same as D. This is how the D flip flop works. So this is how the module of the D flip flop would look like. This is a design module using the behavioral modeling. Now if you have to design say not for the positive edge trigger flip flop but for the negative edge trigger flip flop then this design module can be written for the negative edge trigger flip flop by making a small change. What change you have to make? You have to make a small change where because if you have to do it for the negative edge trigger we have to change this positive edge with a negative edge. So if I replace this positive edge with a neg edge clock then what will happen this always always block will be executed when the clock will be making the negative transition so that will change this module to be the negative edge triggered now let us take the second case where you have to design a deep flip flop which is negative edge triggered and with a asynchronous high reset here we are doing it for the high reset when the reset is high then the output should be reset so how the module sh should look like since we are doing it for the negative edge triggered so before clock we have to write down negage and since we wanted to reset asynchronous reset 
what when we wanted to reset when the reset becomes high so before reset we have to write down posage and then within the always uh, block uh, the statement will be if reset is high then what we want we want q should be reset to zero else we want that q should be same as d so this is how the d flip flop uh, can be designed for the negative edge triggered and with the asynchronous high reset now let us take the third and the final case where you have to design a flip flop which is negative edge triggered but it has a synchronous reset it has a synchronous reset so we have to see how the design module for this kind of a flip flop would look like let us take the take a look at design module first so over here if you compare it with the previous case if you focus here here in the sensitivity list we are just passing a clock signal so when the reset signal is synchronous with the clock then this reset will not be passed as the uh, signal in the sensitivity list why because the reset signal is has to go in synchronous with the clock so it will not come here so this always block will be executed when it will be executed only when the clock makes the negative transition and as soon as the clock makes the negative transition and the reset becomes high then this q will be set to zero so if say the clock is not making the negative uh, transition and the reset is high do you want the uh, output to be reset no so since we do not want that so that is the reason we are not placing the reset signal in the sensitivity list had we placed this reset signal in the sensitivity list then irrespective of whatever the clock signal is if the reset will become high then our output will become zero which we don't want so this is how the uh, design module for the synchronous reset would look like so with this we have learned how to write down the design module for the different kinds of flip flop which may have a asynchronous reset or the synchronous reset now if you have to write down the test bench then we all know how to do it we have to first of all declare the inputs as the register type output as the wire type and then instantiate the flip flop and then within the initial we have to uh, take all the possible cases so we are starting with the clock equal to 0 and reset equal to 0 and d0 and then after 100 units of time i am making it, making reset to be high and d is high and again after 100 units of time keeping the reset same i am making d0 and would see how the simulation would look like so the output should follow the input when the reset is high and when the reset becomes low then the output should remain low and again after 100 units of time i am finishing the simulation now since this is a clock driven device so we have to generate the clock also and we know that how the clock can be generated so we are using the always clock for that so with this we have learned how to write down the design module and the test bench for d flip flop this d flip flop may be either the positive edge triggered or the negative edge triggered and it may have either the asynchronous reset or the synchronous reset